we're continuing our messages on Psalm 23. And the reason why I keep going in Psalm 23 is because I think it's absolutely important for you and I who are living in the situations we are, under the conditions under which we are living, we need to know and be confident that we who have come to Christ have come to fulfillment and to recognize that he is sufficient for all our needs. He is sufficient for all our needs. Psalm 23 is the greatest adversary to anxiety, to fear. When you are fearful, you need to go to Psalm 23. We've been going through this Psalm for a while. We began by showing you how many characteristics of God are in Psalm 23. He's a provider. He's our shield. He is there for us. He is our joy. And so this morning, I want you to know that a good shepherd, if Jesus Christ is your good shepherd, he provides you with eternal security. When you come to Christ, you're saved, and you're saved. You believe in your heart, and I've expressed it with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. You have eternal security. One of the greatest Concern for us today is a matter of security. Everywhere you go, men and women are fearful. They're even warning you now not to travel some places. Why? Because it's not secure. So the greatest problem we have in our world is security, trust. But if the Lord is your shepherd, he can provide you with eternal security. The greatest fear of man has is death, isn't it? But when you die, you don't, you're not a dog. You don't just go into the grave. You have a soul that needs to return. Because man is a living soul. Or a living spirit. And when you die physically, your soul can't die. It's eternal. It's the God part of who we are. And so we know that when we come to Christ, he can provide us with our directional need. We said that. He provides us with our, our directional need. In other words, he leads us beside quiet waters. He can take care of your spiritual need. He will restore your soul. And then we said that he will provide for your physical need. What, is, what did I say did? He will spread out a table before me in the very presence of my enemies. And we will be feeding when the enemy is starving because they can't touch us. And he will give you comfort even when you're going through the valley of the shadows. When you're, not, when you're not certain where you just where you go on, he will give you comfort. And boy, does he know how to set a table before me. Notice where he said it. Right in the time of crisis. When the enemies are watching and waiting for you to fall. He, he, he provides even in times of job cuts. Downsizing. He fills my cup. And it's what it sounds like so that my cup runs over. Why? So that I can help somebody else when my God is my shepherd. And like I said, there's a crisis of security in our world today. Come to think of it, have you traveled to the U.S. lately? Or anywhere for that matter? Even down there is getting dangerous now. 
But I'm here today to tell you that our great shepherd of the sheep, Jesus Christ, can provide your eternal need. Psalm 23 verse 6 says, Surely goodness and mercy, loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life so that I will what? Dwell. You know what the word dwell means? I always think a dwell is a, uh, it's not just you stand up in it. You sit down and you're rested and you're confident that no one can shake you because there's security in where you're sitting. So he says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell. And the house of the Lord for how long? It's not a two week stay. It's not a staycation. It's a dwelling. I'm going to live with God. Like he intended it in the first place. So after telling us in this psalm that God can take care of every need, that a human being can have or possess, the psalmist says, after telling you all of that, he says, surely, goodness and mercy. That's the King James Version. I think a better version really is, is, is mine, actually. The NASB. He says, love goodness and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. So sometimes, you know, things are going a little bit, you know, I, that doesn't mean I'm not going to get sick, you know. But even in my downtime, his goodness and mercy is following me. Th those are God's two uh, hound dogs. Anywhere I go, they're with me. Because he said, I'll be with you always, even unto the end. And you know what's so beautiful about that? In the end, the only end for the Christian is when he come back for you. That's the end. People say when you die, that's the end. No, it's not. It's just a transition. So he says, surely, goodness and mercy. I want you and I at this moment to take a look at the word surely. Surely. Notice that he didn't say maybe. A lot of us Christians are like that. Well, you know, I, I just think maybe God will do this. Maybe God will do that. God is not into maybes. If that's the God you serve, don't even bother. He don't have time for maybes. He says, he didn't say perhaps. Or some of us who are so stosh, um, possibly. He didn't say possibly or hopefully. He said surely. Absolutely. Why did he come to the last verse? Wait until he get to the last verse uh, with such a certainty after all his talk about living and being provided for by Almighty God. Taking us through valleys, having a, 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 a soul needing to be restored in his feeding and, uh, and, and, you know, setting a table before us and all of that stuff. Uh, in, in the very presence of my enemy, I'm prospering. Uh, now he says, surely, surely, surely. What do you mean, David? He's saying here, there are no challenges that you go through that God is not able. None. He's not saying surely because everything is going okay. Because some of us are serving God because we think if we come become a Christian, we're going to have riches, we're going to be well, etc., etc. No, no. He's saying even in the, bit, the middle of your struggles, God is still a provider. He's not saying that God's going to do it because you have no problems. He's saying in the middle of your problems, surely. Because his, why could he say that? After all what we saw him going through, why could he say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me? Why would he say that? Why and how could he say that? I'll tell you why. 
because of his view of God, you see. His view of God overrides his view of his circumstances. So I can say with Job, even though he slays me, do you hear me? Even though he slays me, I have this confidence that in my body I shall see God. Even though this body is falling apart, I shall see God. And when I stand before him, I will be perfect. Why? Because he is my shepherd. You see, he did not allow his view of God to determine what God can do for him. He didn't let circumstances let him take his eyes off of God and wondering where is God. I'm always disturbed when somebody said I'm a Christian and he's wondering where God is. What do you mean where is God? Where's God in my need? Why didn't God do this? I'll tell you where he is. He's the same place. when we were killing his son. And he didn't send 10,000 angels. He let him go through because you couldn't go through it. And he wants you to know that whatever comes, whatever situation you have in your life, I'm with you. And I'm working it out. But you gotta trust me. When he says surely he understood a simple principle that dominate the Psalms. And that is the shepherd is absolutely committed to his sheep. God is committed to you. In whatever circumstances you may find yourself. David realized that his security and our security cannot be based on our circumstances. And many of us call ourselves Christians are living way below our circumstances. Way under our circumstances because we don't believe. We, tr we tell people, I'm, I'm trusting the Lord, yeah. But when you're alone, it's a different matter, isn't it? And David said, I have a God who is greater than any circumstances that I might find myself in. So surely, my God is going to provide for my spiritual need, my physical needs, my directional needs, my emotional needs, and to top it off, my eternal needs. He's able. And he's made a provision. So tell me, friend, what need do you have that my God, my loving, caring shepherd, cannot provide for? The psalmist covers all the bases of human need in Psalm 23. It's all there. Six verses. And when he comes to the end of the psalm, he says, Surely, goodness and loving kindness shall follow me. We're going to deal with that later. Did you hear what he said? It's not in front of us. Guess where it is? It's behind me. Why? Because I'm supposed to be behind the shepherd. Because he's the one who's leading, ain't he? Uh, listen to me for just a minute. If God is your shepherd, there are no circumstances and needs that you have. There's nothing that you can come up against that is worth bothering too much over. We can be concerned. But there's nothing for you to put your hand on your head and go into your little pity party. 
And some of you are living in dark places because you don't get it. <laughs> when temptation and testing comes, and, and we all get there sometimes, I don't know about you, but when I get depressed, I get in my car and I drive and I go somewhere and sit out in the bush and just look at a tree maybe and say, no, Lord, if I can count them leaves, it would be something awesome, wouldn't it? But you already know how much of them there. As a matter of fact, you know how many leaves this tree has produced since the birth of this tree. So little old me here, if you can take care of these, the Bible even said God feed lions. That when the lions go to cast their prey, and I think when the lions sit there with the prey and grow, you ever notice a lion and he look up and he grow? What do you think he's doing? I'm just telling to you to, 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 to you know, to, to use your imagination. He grow and he grins and he says, Lord, ha <laughs> ha. You did it again. Now if a lion can do that. Some of you claim you're from the tribe of the lion of Judah. Yes. How can you be out there telling people, oh poor me, you know, no, no, well, me, you know, I'm just sleeping, yeah, blah, blah. Quit your whining. Quit your whining. God hate whiners. You don't believe me? Read the Old Testament. Every time they come before God, oh, we don't know water. So God gave them water. God is so amazing. God didn't just send a guy with a bucket. He sent a guy with a rock. And he says, speak to the rock. I'm going to show these ungrateful some bodies. And the, he spoke to the rock. And guess what? The, back, and the New Testament says, guess what the rock did after they drink? And they were full. You know how we are? We eat and we fall. So we're going to lie down. Well, these guys, they eat, they drink, and they feel good now. So they start stepping off. And when they look around, guess what? The rock. The rock is following them. All through the desert. If God can do that to a disobedient, whining, grumbling bunch, Think about it, what God will do for you when you can get up and say, Lord, God, look up my knee this morning, but Lord, <clears throat> praise the Lord. God's good. It's my God. I don't have much, but I have God. I might not possess a suit, but here's one thing I have. One confidence. Can I tell you what it is? Because you, maybe you don't know it. Yes. The Bible said God have a robe for you. Yes. That when you get to heaven, yes. you think these threads are heavy. Yes. Wait till you get to heaven yes. and see your coat yes. are many colors. Yes. Oh, you're going to strut. But you're not going to strut because you're strutting. No. You're going to strut because you're going to say, Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, look at me. Because he's my shepherd. And when he's my shepherd, he takes care of me. But it doesn't mean he's going to get a $1,000 suit. He says, I will take care of you. Uh, turn over to Psalm chapter 56 and verse 9. Psalm 56, verse 9. Then my enemies will turn back in the day when I call. Huh? Lord, when I call on you, when my enemies surround me and I can't get away, I'm going to call on you. And they're going to run. Why, God? Here's the psalmist. This I know. God is for me. God is for me. When you get in your struggles and things are going and some of the downstairs and the naysayers are bad mouthing you and you feel bad, don't get vexed at them. 
shoot up your mouth and try to get revenge, just look them in the eye and say, appreciate your commentary, but my God is for me. God is for me. And when God is for me, you better get in line. You better don't let my God get mad at you because I'm the apple of his eye. God is for you. I don't care what situation you're in. God is for you. Weak as you may be with all of your deficits, all your sins, God is for you. Tell it on the treetops. Therefore, you can move forward though knowing that your shepherd is tenaciously committed to you. Do you hear that word? You didn't think I could pronounce it. He's tenaciously for you. Oh, did you get it? Did you get it? Did yes, you get it? Yes, 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 yes. So on your best day, God is for you. Yes. And on your worst day, God is for me. So what do I have to worry about? I'm aware of what's going on. That's right. But I'm a child of God. Therefore, you can move forward knowing that your shepherd is tenaciously committed to you and he loved you passionately. Can I tell you something? He loved you to death. Yes. Yes. Because he is committed to you. God is like life insurance. Yeah, your insurance company cannot promise you that you won't have an accident. Because if he could promise you, you got, if you never have an accident, you'll never have insurance. He can't promise you're not going to have an accident. He can't promise you there's not going to be a storm or your house not going to be flooded out. Or your pipe burst and fire won't burn your house down. They can't promise you you're going to have a great life. There's even one insurance company called Great Life. He can't promise you no great life. You need insurance so that when things go upside down, your policy covers it. So when troubles come and you are covered, because you pay the policy. Don't forget, you have to pay the policy. If you don't pay, it'll lapse. But can I tell you something? The insurance policy that we have with God can never lapse. Because the price that we pay, you see, you're covered. You may ask, how do I pay for this policy regardless of my circumstances? Is my premium paid up because I came to church? Is that why my premium is paid up? Is my premium paid up because I, you know, I attend Bible study? I've been baptized? Or because I read my Bible every day and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing people good works, you know? Is that all my eternal insurance policy that guarantees please me life forever with God? Is that how it's paid up? No. No, 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 no. You're going to like this. God is committed to you. And he's so committed to you, he picked up your payment. He picked up your payment plan. And he signed the check in blood. And he put on it 
Jesus announced, it is finished. It has been paid in full. So I'm covered. You're covered. So what are you worried about? Are you worried because somebody might see you and they're not impressed because you are walking with the king? Is it because I'm I'm humping and I'm leaning over and I pull a box going and I can't do like I used to? I'm saying, oh, that's because I didn't pay the payment. Mm -mm. It's been paid in full. So even though he's slain me, here we go again. I have this confidence that I am secure eternally. Because he's paid the price. In the blood of Jesus the Christ. And so when God saved you, he took all your faults and all my faults and all my failures and all your sin and my sin. And he laid them on Christ. And so, surely, in spite of all that is going through, I'm going through, or you're going through, verse 5 of Psalm 23 says, Surely, goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. Question though, what is the scope of my security? How wide is this? First of all, there's security in time. Verse 6 again. Surely, goodness and loving kindness will follow me. How long, folks? All the days of my life. There will not be one day in my life or your life that this policy does not cover me. David understood that this coverage by God is from all the days of my life. So I can, so I can say today I'm covered by God's goodness and God's loving kindness. But all I could deal with today is, a good, is surely goodness. So it's going to take a little while for me to get to kindness. But let me tell you something else. You may ask, what about when one's body breaks down? What about when the doctor tells me I have cancer? What about when sickness comes upon me and or maybe on my loved ones, and I have to watch them suffer and go through pain and die. What about me losing my job? What about my, you know, maybe I'm retired now, my whole day security is not meeting my needs. What about that? What if my children can make grade? Or they get into being caught up and running in the wrong crowd? What about when the people that I thought was my friend turn on me? Does that have an effect upon me spiritually? There are all kinds of things that comes into our lives that test us and test our confidence in whether God cares for me or not. There are crucial times when sometimes even when you're in, 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 you think you know, I'm doing God's work and yet Look what's happening. You see, there are times when pious platitudes don't work. When grunting and bearing is no option at all. When my little ones fall apart and the dreams, castles of my ambitions are falling apart, they're crumbling in rooms. Can I say truly? Can I declare, surely, goodness and love and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life? Will I question what kind of days are these, God? Folks, I am not setting myself up as any great example, 
But you know, there are times when I'm prone to wonder. Lord, I feel it. I prone to leave the God I love. But I have discovered that, yes, God's goodness and love and kindness is sufficient for all my needs. And I promise you that if you really, if you really, really trust him, he will be your constant companion. Though through whatever hazard that comes your way. Because let's face it, without God in this world, we're in serious trouble. Because we have no hope. That's why people jump over the windows. But we have hope that is steadfast and sure when he is my shepherd. And he will look at our lives with tenderness and because he loves you deeply, he will always provide a means of escape so that you can bear upon the whatever struggles you're going through. The reason why his goodness and love and kindness flows to you is so that you can have a testimony. You can tell others, my God is a good God. Yes, he is. My God's has sent me blessing so much that if he don't send me another one, I'll be still satisfied with him. Because he is an amazing God. And he says to me, I will be with you until the end of time. And God has blessed you so much that he's even given you the room to lay a blessing on somebody else. And sometimes, you know, the only way you can bless people is just to look them in the eye and say, listen, I know things are going tough, but keep going. Because God's good. You're going to come out of this. you got to look up. you got to stop looking around. you got to keep your eye upon Jesus Christ and the prize of being in glory with him one of these days. And you've got to develop a keen ear because the Bible says, you know, when he comes back, you're going to hear a shout. That shout is going to be special. you got to be spiritually sensitive to the voice of God. To hear God's voice. And one of these days you're going to hear it. Whether you're dead or alive. You're going to hear it. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we who are alive and remain. When you see that dead head reach to your level. All of us will begin to go up at the same time. Because nobody will supersede the other. There's no hierarchy. We all level. We all children. Not grandchildren as we go to meet our maker. So the question is, are you willing to let God use you in spite of your pain and your difficulties? Because he promised that when you put your trust in him, he will sustain you. To keep you going. Why? So that you have something to tell somebody. And when you tell them, you can say, you remember me? This is me talking. Now. At one time I will be mourning and whining. But I have this confidence that God is with me. May God help you today to get that deep in your spirit. So that you can say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless my soul. And don't you ever forget his benefits. Because he says, I'm with you. Therefore, his presence shall go with you. May his presence go with you today and convince you that you are a child of God. Our Father, we thank you for your mercies. They are new every morning. But Lord, we want to thank you for the fact that you have laid it out so plainly for us that when you are our shepherd, 
we shall not want. Lord, help us to get that from the head to the heart. And help us to let the Holy Spirit inscribe it in the center of our being. So that whatever comes our way, we will recognize your presence and your purpose. Father, we pray that you allow this word to continue to resonate in the spirit of my people this morning. Because I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to sing. 434. Mercy 
is John follow me all the days all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and I shall feast at the table spread for me surely goodness and the mercies shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Today is the first Sunday of November. Time's going on. And so we come to participate in the communion service that Jesus says that we are to remember him. And so here we are this morning, remembering the Lord. And so he said, Paul is telling us about this, and he said that I delivered unto you that which have been given. He's very specific. And he wants you to know that the very night that Jesus Christ was on this earth, the last night of his life, he said he took bread and after he gave it thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Paul says, he took a cup after supper saying, this cup, is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So we come to remember what Jesus Christ did for us. And Paul says we need to come
I changed my hymn. What a wonderful. That's the one. What number is that? What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought. Mm. 581. 581. Sometimes you just have to listen to what the Spirit is saying. 581. I want you to leave on a high confidence that God is with you when you leave here. So let's stand and sing. What a wonderful change. What a wonderful thing in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have light in my soul that this long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into Patiently, here's verse 3. I shall go there to dwell in that city I know since Jesus came into my heart. Oh, and I'm happy, so happy, and onward I go since Jesus came into my heart. Say, Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And the Bible says, after all that he did that night, they sung a hymn and they went out. I don't know what is going to happen when you go through that door, but he does. So put your hand in his hand and let your shepherd lead you the greater pastors, and he will. Amen? Amen? God bless you. May God cause his face to shine upon you and give you his peace, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.